So, don't. Cause we're just gonna go straight into it though. We're gonna go straight into it. Check, check, and check. Having moved to his West Texas home not even half a year ago, a 28-year-old viewer, who I'll refer to as John, sent me this voicemail that he received in August of 2021 from an unknown number. John was going about his night when his cell phone began to ring. Right. And on the screen, it said, no caller ID. This is rather That's unusual. That's a red, hold on. Oh, shit. It's a red flag. Oh shit. We got candy. I did not see that. <laughs> I got covered that shit up. I don't ever answer that shit at all. I don't answer that. I don't answer a, um now iPhone's got like a spam wrist uh phone call. I don't answer that. I don't answer. I don't even. I barely answer um, numbers that I don't even recognize. So it makes me think I might answer that because I'm not. Well, as for anybody to come up on someone's phone as no caller ID means they went out of their way to intentionally hide their number. Often doctors will do this to keep their privacy from their patients. But other than this and a few other professional circumstances, this is usually at least a slight red flag. John let the call go to voicemail, not wanting to potentially get stuck on the phone with somebody he didn't want to be talking to. This was the voicemail he received. Uh, hey, I'm not, I'm not your ass. I found your info online. I could really use a job. Uh, uh, what info? Okay, I'm gonna put myself in another person's shoes. Right? What info are you talking about? What 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 are you talking about? Because I didn't put nothing. I don't need no assistance, no nothing. I didn't put out nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. I put this shoulder up. 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 And I drop it. I forgot the rest of that. Did you open the door? Oh, nah. The message was short but direct. John immediately thought it was a joke or that they had the wrong number, but naturally he was curious. Either way, he knew he didn't want to open the front door, especially if someone was actually out there. But the man saying that John found his info online made him open up Google and search his own name. The second result on Google led to an online corporation database that listed all of John's public info, including his first and last name, Jesus. phone number, and new home address. John is self-employed, but for the purpose of tax benefits, he started an S-corporation in his name, literally with his name in the title of the business. This means his S-corp, along with his name, would eventually be listed on numerous online corporate database websites. Coming to this realization, the voicemail suddenly seemed more legitimate. John went downstairs and inched closer to the front door, trying to be quiet. Someone started to bang on the front door, and a voice from the other side was saying something. But his voice was muffled. John ignored the knocking until it stopped. But seconds later, his phone vibrated again as he received a call. Again with a no-caller ID message. He ignored it again, incredibly scared. Another voicemail was left. This time there was no talking in it, though. The knocking on the front door stopped, but moments later, a knocking from the back door ensued. He took out his phone and started to record again. Oh my god. This is why I love missing nightmare videos. Some real life horror movie shit. 
Damn, this shit is good. Damn, I wish I had some popcorn for me. Or, Orville Redenbacher, that's what it is. As he turned on the lights, revealing the silhouette on the other side, the situation became even more real for John. The guy called one more time, and Joe picked up, saying, I have a gun, and I already called the police. What would y'all do in this situation? Would you let them know? Would you let the, the intruder know? The bad guy know that you called the police? Because I wouldn't. You know, matter of fact, I would call the police, let them know to haul ass over here without no sirens, no noise whatsoever. I just want y'all to sound like a regular car, you know, in the neighborhood. Because it's already dark as shit outside. Just saying. So that way, so that way, if you do let the intruder know, no, 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 no. So that way, when the cops do show up, bow, they already there. And so is the intruder. Versus the, versus you letting the intruder know that the police are on, like, they're on their way. Right? With, more than likely, if you... If you let the uh, intruder know that the police are on their way, the police are going to come with their sirens. The intruder can hear that shit from like a mile or further away. He can haul ass like a motherfucker. He got time to run. I'm not saying shit. I'm just going to let the police just pop up on your ass. Man on the other end claimed he was just looking for work and he apologized and hung up. My ass. The knocking ceased. John contacted the websites displaying his personal information the next day, but they refused to remove the info. So he went through the process of changing his business name to no longer include his actual name. I'm suing. It's very unlikely anybody who's knocking on both your front and back door late at night and calling your number anonymously is there just looking for a job. This is what I'm saying. If John opened the door, this probably would have had a much different outcome. <laughs> This was the voicemail received by the girlfriend of viewer Alex Azari. Alex's girlfriend reached out to him right after hearing it for the first time to get his opinion on it, since his name could slightly be heard in there, to which all he could offer was equal confusion and concern. He assumed it was one of his friends pranking him at first, but after reaching out to all of his friends... Your friends are dicks in their, in their asses, and then all their moms are hoes. Because if you think your friends just play with your life like that, you gotta get some new friends. No new friends, no new friends, no, no, no. They all claimed it wasn't them, and each of them thought it was equally creepy. Alex had no outgoing calls, and the person specifically called his girlfriend while mentioning his name, so somehow they must have gotten both of their contact info. Alex and his girlfriend live in different states, and very few people in his life have her number. The voicemail itself is very hard to understand. In the beginning, it sounds like there may be a second person in the background. It's not hard to understand. I can tell you exactly what was going on. Somebody got... I packed the Trojan condoms and went to town. I put this shut up. I put this shut up. And I drop them. But it's all very muffled. You can, however, clearly hear that someone is crying into the phone. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm oh, no. At this point, it sounds as though someone is speaking, though it's very difficult to understand. It sounds like they're saying, I'm trapped in the dark, although it could be something else. At first, Alex was unsure if this was just a prank, a hacker, or something else. But after receiving this voicemail, Alex claims a number of strange occurrences happened in his house that same day and the following. First, a door upstairs slammed shut randomly while oh. everyone in the house was downstairs eating dinner. Upon inspecting the bedroom, nobody was inside. Alex and his brother also apparently heard what sounded like footsteps coming up the stairs when they were home alone. So we on some paranormal shit. That, that, that's what that was. That's what that, okay, got it, bet. Paranormal, Toby, where you at with yours? Cause I got mine, I got mine. 
Adidas Ultra Boost 36,700. First, they considered the possibility it may have been one of their two dogs until checking and remembering they had a dog gate standing at the bottom of the stairs, preventing them from coming up the stairs. Each time they looked around the hole upstairs and checked the stairway, they couldn't find anyone. The footsteps also didn't sound like those of a dog. They were reportedly heavier and more spaced out, like a person's footsteps. With this happening the same day and one day after it... Battery low. Ow. No. Nope, hold on. I gotta plug my, I gotta plug my, what's the name in? I gotta plug my, uh, I got hold on, give me a second. I have to plug my, my speaker in. Hold on, give me a second. Each time they looked around the hole upstairs and checked the stairway, they couldn't find anyone. The footsteps also didn't Wait, wait, like wait, wait, wait. I just want to make sure. Give me a second. On stairs eating dinner. Upon inspecting the bedroom, nobody was inside. Alex and his brother also apparently heard what sounded like footsteps coming up the stairs when they were home alone. At first, they considered the possibility it may have been one of their two dogs, until checking and remembering they had a dog gate standing at the bottom of the stairs, preventing them from coming up the stairs. Each time they looked around the hole upstairs and checked the stairway, they couldn't find anyone. The footsteps also didn't sound like those of a dog. Yeah. They were reportedly heavier and more spaced out, yeah. like a person's footsteps. Or Toby. With this happening the same day and one day after receiving this concerning unexplainable voicemail, Alex believes the occurrences may all be linked. In this video you're about to watch, a couple briefly documents they're listening to two creepy voicemails received on the husband's phone. Hey, man. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Ready for the big trip? We're ready for the big trip. Okay, that sounds good. That's a thick-ass goddamn mustache. Jesus! And receiving strange voicemails for weeks already, both on their cell phones and on the landline. In this video, though, the man's phone doesn't even ring. He just gets two straight to voicemail notifications. Oh, wow. No phone number or any contact details attached to the voicemail. Uh, no. Uh, I would have broke that shit in half. I would have canceled my plan. And I'm suing the hell out of Verizon. I don't know why I said Verizon. Why do I get like, this is like some, I just feel like the way it's filmed and the way what's going on, I just feel like this is a, I'm getting very much Blur Witch, paranormal, uh, home footage, but not really home footage, found footage type shits going on right now. Wow. Oh my God. That is all Toby. Ain't no way that's a mistake either. That's on purpose. inquired about the calls for the phone company as well, both before and after this video. However, they did not have any records of the audio message being received. The couple described the voicemails as sounding like somebody was being tortured or some kind of creature was screaming into the phone. The couple would also hear strange sounds in the house at night for a week, such as cabinets closing from the kitchen. They believed that what they were dealing with was supernatural. Yeah. Toby just moved February in. of 2021. 30-year-old Martha Ramirez woke up on a Saturday morning with a notification on her iPhone that said voicemail from an unknown number. Upon listening to it, this is what she heard. Martha. 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 
Sound like he's saying Marcus. The voice you just heard in the voicemail was of Martha's father. This caused her a great deal of confusion and horror. But why? Why was this even remotely concerning? Well, Martha lost her dad to cancer in 2019. At the time this voicemail was left, he had been dead for almost two years. She listened to the voicemail over and over, trying to think of any other possible person it could be. But she knew her dad's voice. She knew the way her dad's voice sounded saying her name. She tried to think back to if her dad had ever left a voicemail simply repeating her name multiple times, but she couldn't remember a single instance. Even if she could, that wouldn't explain randomly receiving a voicemail of her father's voice years later. She called their service provider, but they... Maybe that's... I... Just hear me out. Maybe that's a sign that he's alright, you know? Like, like, when my, like, like, probably like a year or so after my mom died, I got a, I got a, um, I didn't get a voicemail, but I got a dream, I had a dream. And basically, my mom was in that dream, and then what I interpreted from that dream was that she was okay, she was alright. Um, if y'all want to hear more about that dream, which I'm, I'm mentally okay to talk about that now, but if y'all want to hear in detail what happened in that dream just let me know that in the comment section below and i'll make a video on that but maybe um i don't know maybe that was just a sign to let you know that he was okay not able to trace anonymous calls she asked her entire family if any of them were playing a messed up joke but when she sent all of them the voicemail they were all equally disturbed she claimed she was never a religious person at all nor is she a believer in the supernatural but she also doesn't believe this was the work of anybody she knew, or any kind of glitch. She says she actually believes this was her dad's voice contacting her, and it terrifies her deeply. This last voicemail was posted to Reddit three years ago. Part of the Reddit post read, To make a long story short, my significant other got a new phone. For the first time, she has visual voicemail. A family member left her a voicemail today and when checking it, discovered she had several missed voicemails. She started going through the voicemails. Typical stuff, family, bill collectors, but one voicemail dated Friday, June 9th, 2017 at 4.38 p.m. was from a number we do not know. you just heard was just a small clip from the original three minute long audio which seems to have been removed from the internet without a trace in this small audio clip though it sounds like the girl on the other end is saying please help me and even they have my baby the rest of the reddit post read it's three minutes long and the area code is 480 placing the owner around the phoenix arizona valley i've spent all day researching news where their incidents happened the afternoon of june 9th 2017 and have exhausted my very limited abilities in researching. None of our family members or friends recognize the number either. The voicemail was dated almost a year ago and was not discovered until today. I will be contacting Phoenix police to provide them with the audio, timestamp, and phone number. I star 67 the number and went straight to voicemail. Significant other has had the same phone number for 10 years. Based on a lot of the original replies to the thread, the original audio was so horrific and many couldn't even get through it all. Still, some people believe it to be a hoax. Either way, this voicemail and whoever was behind it still remain a mystery. Real talk, I sometimes, I'll get like every once in a while, I'll get like some weird voicemails, but it would only last like a couple of seconds. Um. That's not until after I would get a call, not answer it, and then they would leave me a voice message. But I, I would, I have never, to my record, how you say it, recollection, um, gotten a a voicemail, just just got like a straight voicemail without no 
nobody calling. I've never had that shit happen. Um, also, I feel like these voicemails in this video was on purpose. And it happened for a reason. Especially the one with her father. Saying Martha. Yeah, I feel like that was a sign. But, um, I think he's alright. But Toby gotta get out these mother cluckers. Like, Toby gotta stop messing around with this real life stuff. Just, just worry about, you know, your life. You know, you have all the eternity to do whatever you want. You wanna mess with us. You, you a ass. Keep it cool, keep it classy, and I love you. Stay happy. My family.